Grab your tinfoil hat because we are going to spec town. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why I think WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, and Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange 2 are all leading to Mephisto. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swigel Haas. I hope you brought your tinfoil hat because we are taking a ride to spec town in this one. Now, there was a lot of news in Disney Investor Day that came out last week. And specifically, there's been a lot of murmurs about how WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness are all sort of tied together like a trilogy of some kind. In this video, I'm going to break down what I think is going on with that and why I think we are ultimately leading to Mephisto. Now, I did a video a few weeks back that kind of did a speculation on the entire MCU phase four. And I talked about a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video today, except this one's going to be a more uh, specific streamlined version with these three properties. So before I get into that, into that though, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe, if you're enjoying my content, help support the channel, keeps me motivated. And I love interacting with you guys. So it's always great to hear uh, from the comments and let's keep this conversation going. So with that being said, let me get into what I think is going on with these three properties, and we're gonna take a little bit of a look at the comic books that relate to them and see if there's maybe some uh, blue ocean territory still to be found uh, within what people are specking on. All right, so with that being said, let us get into some of the stuff that I found in the current Loki trailer. And that is this image right here. Now, in my video uh, on Friday, where I talked about the Investor Day announcements, I actually pointed to this at the end of the video. And over the weekend, slowly but surely, it seemed like more and more people started to see this and are starting to get the same sort of thoughts that I got. And if you notice here in the stained glass window, right here in the back, what do you see? You see a devil image with fire and brimstone which could in fact be an Easter egg to Mephisto. Now I am somebody that believes that we are getting Mephisto and it makes sense to me why uh, it would be all connected with Wanda, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Now there was an article here that I wanted to point to, which was, uh, this came out today on MCU Initiative a blog publication about MCU rumors and speculation. And this one talked about Marvel Studios Mephisto in the MCU. And he was talking about how uh, th this could be a, you know, uh, all leading up to Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness and that we have like WandaVision and all that sort of stuff. And, and he mentioned specifically this, this Easter egg in Loki. And so I kind of wanted to really dig into this and figure out or kind of explain to you guys why I think this all makes sense from a, from a um, creative standpoint, but also more importantly, from a business standpoint, because for me, ultimately, I think what is the most important thing to analyze when, when looking at these rumors and really, really trying to get in the weeds of what's going on here is to think of it from a business perspective. Why would Kevin Feige or Disney want to do Mephisto? What, what purpose does it serve for them? You know, I'm, I'm someone who has worked in the creative field all my life, have, have worked for big uh, companies that have, you know, really rich lore and, and have these intellectual properties that they take very seriously. And one of the things that um, is common amongst a lot of them is, you know, they, they take their lore extremely, extremely seriously. And when they introduce things into the, um, into the public, they're really thinking about, you know, how does this serve us? Uh, unilaterally across all our, all of our properties? How does this serve us for other creative that we want to introduce in the future? And, th you know, th they think about this stuff. It's it, it's not as simple as, oh, Mephisto would be cool. Let's just get him in the MCU. It, it's much more deep than that. And I'm going to kind of break down what I think is going on in this video. So uh, I kind of did a, a little bit of a slate, which I did in my last prediction video. And I kind of want to show you guys what I have with that. And this is my <laughs> appropriately titled Kevin Feige's Goals. Now, this is something I think is always really important in these spec videos. That, like I want to reiterate why um, why I'm arriving at the conclusions I'm arriving at, and it's based in these fundamental beliefs that I have. Granted, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors in Disney. I have no idea if these are these are actually their goals. But but this is something that I really wanted to. Um, Kind of analyze because I think that if if in fact these are things that Feige is talking about, this is this is stuff that we um, can use to help inform us and and kind of understand where these rumors uh, may in fact be be holding um, some truth to them. 
So uh, I have two two wings here, Kevin Feige's goals. We have business goals and we have creative goals. Now, really quickly, the business goals, make money, keep the train running, meaning let's keep this uh, property of Marvel going on for you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, uh, focus on Disney Plus. And the most important business goal that I want to talk about here, which is why I think we're getting all this Mephisto talk in the first place, is solve the Sony and Omniverse issues. Now, for those who don't know, if you guys have been paying attention to sort of the trades and the business side of the MCU, uh, Spider-Man, Tom Holland, is a licensed property that it, that is owned by Sony. So when we got Tom Holland in our MCU, it, it was actually because Kevin Feige struck a deal with Sony to license his like uh, his uh, the IP back to uh, Marvel. Ironically, because Sony actually has this license now, they're going on a film by film basis and. It was actually even for a second mur uh, rumored that Tom Holland might not even be in the next Spider-Man, that he was going to get his, his license revealed and they had to get Bob Iger involved and all that sort of thing. So that is to say that Kevin Feige has an issue where he's got to work with Sony and he doesn't have full creative control over what he can do with the Spider-Man property. So. This is where I think all the Spider-Man 3 rumors are coming, where you have Jamie Foxx you know, coming back as Electro, where you have Alfred Molina coming back as Dr. Octopus. This is why I think that we're actually getting this, because take away the fact that, oh, it'd be cool to do a Spider-Verse. What would be the best thing for both Marvel Studios and for Sony Studios, right? What would be the best thing? They they could make a quid pro quo where they help each other, right? Where they Where they recognize each other's universes as canon. So uh, if, M if the MCU can acknowledge that Tom Hardy Venom, for instance, is actually in canon, and, and the MCU can recognize that, or, or sorry, Sony, Sony can recognize that the MCU, uh, what they do with their properties are in canon. These two things can really help each other and service each other for the fans so that we, uh, even if it doesn't work from a business side of things, that we can't have Tom Hardy in the MCU, the, the fact that they acknowledge each other in canon means that the fan bases are the same and the fan bases can enjoy both universes um, and, and not be at odds with each other. They can recognize that both universes are important. So what I think that Kevin Feige probably pitched to Sony was, hey, let's do a multiverse here that acknowledges that both of these universes are in canon. And in, in Spider-Man 3 and in Doctor Strange, the reason why we should get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Alfred Molina and all that stuff is I want to actually acknowledge and recognize that your properties that you guys created with Sony all those years ago are in fact important and canon. So I think that's him throwing them a bone and saying, we're going to, we're going to put all these properties together and acknowledge the fact that they're all in canon. So when and if we decide to part ways or when and if uh, the business side of things don't work out, you know, we can't have Tom Holland in a future Avengers movie or whatever it is, whatever the contractual, when the lawyers get involved and all that stuff, uh, it's going to be uh, at least accepted in canon that both these universes exist and that for the for the reason why Tom Holland now is in the Tom Hardy Venom movie, uh, it's because he got sucked in canon through a multiverse of some kind. So that's why I think that there's been a lot of emphasis on this. So anyways, moving on with the goals. Uh, and then as far as uh, creative goals he's got going on, World Build Foundation, bring in Fantastic Four, bring in X-Men and create next big threats. Now, the, one of the reasons why I think Mephisto is the right character for Feige is, is, is a couple of things. Number one, he's got to solve this, this Sony Omniverse thing. So he's got to get a, a multiverse level threat that he can, he can create within, uh, uh, to, to create this uh, dual universe situation. So Mephisto is a great one because Mephisto lives in, a second, in another dimension. And then he's got a world build foundation, right? So what is a character that's going to help him get new characters into the MCU or new properties into the MCU, like a, a Fantastic Four, like an X-Men, like a Ghost Rider. Uh, and I think that Mephisto is a character that can help him do that, more so than a lot of the other bad guys on the table. Now, there, there was a lot of speculation at one point that Nightmare was going to be the bad guy of uh, Doctor Strange 2. And I think that that's probably where him and Scott Derrickson disagreed because I think for Feige, he's like, yeah, Nightmare's cool, but that doesn't help service 
other future things down the road, like Mephisto does. Because for those who don't know, Mephisto has ties to Scarlet Witch. Mephisto has ties to the Silver Surfer. Mephisto has ties to the Fantastic Four. And Mephisto has ties to Doctor Doom. So knowing that eventually we're going to get Fantastic Four into the universe, knowing eventually we're going to get Silver Surfer into the universe, Mephisto helps facilitate um, those storylines that he may decide to do later down the road. Nightmare doesn't really have uh, anything to do with those characters, so he doesn't serve any purpose. I'm sure Feige loves Nightmare and he'd love to see him, but again, with these companies, you have to have a plan. You have to bring in characters that are going to help service future stories down the road. Additionally, I think Feige has, uh, you know, Ghost Rider on his mind, and Mephisto and Ghost Rider stories are very, very much connected. So, with Doctor Doom, Fantastic Four, uh, Silver Surfer, Ghost Rider, Mephisto is a character that's going to be a nice linchpin for all those stories, and that's why we're gonna, we're, he's going to want to have him on the table. All right, so let's keep going on into the rumors and kind of let me talk about what's what's going on here, or what what I see going on here. So we have in the Loki show. Uh, this is uh, Owen Wilson's character. He works for the TVA, and the TVA is, is the Time Variance Authority. And one, one thing, as a little bit of a sidebar, let's just point out really quick. This is the first appearance of TVA, and I just wanted to show you the, the high raw I saw of this book being sold uh, just on December 10th is up to $30. That's crazy. I, I got this in a haul in my video yesterday for $2. And if you look here, I actually did a count. This specific book, first appearance of TVA, I think in the last couple days has sold like 75 copies. It's it's totally insane. So people are specking on TVA in a big way. And I think TVA is a really important thing because uh, you know, because as I mentioned in this Easter egg with Mephisto, I think that this this Loki show is gonna really, really lay the foundation of what is going on, or, or it's gonna world build a lot. It's gonna explain to us, you know, oh, here's other dimensions, here's other times, here's other multiverses. So it's gonna really lay down the rules as we jump into WandaVision, or as we learn in WandaVision and Spider-Man 3 and then Doctor, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So this is kind of a really interesting thing. Now, another thing I wanted to point out in the trailer really quick, is as a little bit of a sidebar, and then we'll kind of get into Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, um, is they were showing these three faces a lot. Now, it could be that we are alluding to the Living Tribunal in these three faces, and Living Tribunal could maybe be the, the Grand Master Overseer of the Time Variance Authority. I don't know. Um, but, but, it, but visually speaking, these three faces don't seem to be... Um, the sort of proper interpretation of what the Living Tribunal is. That's not to say that Marvel wouldn't sort of modernize what the Living Tribunal would be, but you never know. This could be an interesting uh, visual that that we see in um, uh, the Loki show, or this could be an interesting Easter egg. Maybe we do get the Living Tribunal. I took a look at the books being sold, and uh, since the announcement, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Seven books have been sold. So this is something that could be interesting for you guys. If you're interested in owning a Living Tribunal um, comic book or you want to spec on it, Strange Tales 158 could be a cool spec book. Doesn't seem like everyone has flocked to it yet, but that is a, a, an interesting Easter egg. I'm not fully convinced. I, you know, I, I, I'm not totally sure about this, but just something I wanted to point out. Okay, so let's move on. So now let's get into how WandaVision, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness all relate and what I think is actually going to happen. So we had these two shots in the trailer of WandaVision. One, she it looks like she's having like some kind of dream, dream-like, you know, state or she's, you know, in some sort of weird, um, you know, memory or something. And, and this is her looking at the explosion of the Mind Stone. And so what I think is going on here is, what it seems to me is that uh, they're going to say that when she blew up the Mind Stone with Vision, if you guys remember in Infinity War, I think that that sort of probably unlocked something in her head. And being that she's so powerful, I think now she actually unknowingly is ripping open um, multiverses and dimensions and things like that. And that probably got the attention of Mephisto. So... I think this whole series is going to be uh, just her trying to understand what's going on with that. It's going to be a little bit of a mystery. And then in the end, it's going to be that like, okay, we're getting an allusion to Mephisto uh, wanting to get his hands on her or wanting to get into our dimension through her. Uh, and then similarly, I think that her creating all these portals is actually going to be what ends up happening, why we have Jamie Foxx Electro or Andrew Garfield or Andrew Molina. Uh, I think that those... 
uh, portals in the Spider-Man universe are going to rip open, and then those characters are going to be make our way into our MCU. So that I think is what is what's going to happen there. And then similarly, uh, if we look ahead, I think that in Spider-Man three. Once Wanda rips open all of these dimensions, we're going to get the Sinister Six. And so this is something that's really interesting to me because a lot of people have been specking on this book. A lot of people have been specking on the first appearances of, of all these characters. Now, there's only so much movement that you can have when you do a, a when you're specking on these characters because granted, these books are Silver Age blue chip classics anyways. And these, these characters in particular um, have all like, all their books are already sort of pricey. So it's not like someone can uh, do a purchase that is, you know, uh, impulse buy. It's, it, these are some things that you have to sort of focus on to get. But we have seen a lot of movement. If you, I, I was looking at the Go, Go Collect numbers and most specifically Dr. Octopus, uh, his book has spiked tremendously and, and Mysterio's first appearance book has spiked tremendously because those characters in particular have been announced that they are, in fact, coming back to the MCU. And in fact, I pulled up an article here. We have reports, Alfred Molina to return as Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 3. Makes a lot of sense to me because, again, I do believe that, uh, again, with the Feige goals, he's trying to canonize the Omniverse here. He, Sony and, and, and um, uh, MCU are acknowledging each other in that, in that sense. And we are, I definitely think we're going to get some version of the Sinister Six. So, which is kind of interesting because everyone has specced on the Electro book. Everyone has specced on Dr. Octopus book. There are reports that Mysterio is coming back. Um, so I would say if you're a Sandman fan, uh, it hasn't been announced that that, that actor is coming back uh, for, for the MCU. But if, I'm, if I was a gambling man, I would definitely put my money on him. And, and additionally, I would definitely put my money on uh, seeing Craven the Hunter. Granted, a lot of people have already been specking on those books, but I really do believe that we're going to get to a Sinister Six to some degree because all these multiverses that got opened up by Wanda are getting ripped together and, and we're seeing all the characters jump into our universe. So I think that that's how we're going to get it. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to spec on some of those books, I would definitely keep my eye on them. Um, you know, the, the, I would definitely keep my eye on the Sandman one and the, uh, Craven one, because I think even though people are specking on them, those are the ones that have not been announced in the trades yet. And those would be the ones I keep my eye out on. Uh, so with that being said, what, what could be the, the story that happens in Spider-Man? I think it'll be something along the lines of, you know, uh, Spider-Man, if we remember from the last movie, it was announced his secret identity by Mysterio. I think one of the top heavy hitters, like a like an Osborne or someone, is going to hire uh, Craven the Hunter to hunt down Spider-Man. So the first part of the movie will be him getting hunted by Craven. So that's how we'll get him in. And then somewhere in the middle of the movie, shit's going to hit the fan, and we're going to have all these other characters in Spider-Man jump in. And apparently, the rumor is that it's going to end on a cliffhanger. So I think what's going to happen is all of these characters and all this universe is going to get sucked into Doctor Strange 2. And probably Mephisto is going to do some kind of crazy game where Spider-Man has to fight all of the... The three Spider-Mans have to fight all of the Sinister Six characters. Maybe we don't see Mysterio until Doctor Strange 2, because you know in our universe, he's already dead. So... All right, moving on here. So we, we have that. We, we get into Spider-Man. Then we get into uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, which I think, again, is going to be the Silver Surfer uh, uh, number three, first appearance of Mephisto. I think that this is what we're ultimately going to get. And by the end of it, what I think is really interesting is I think that ultimately they will defeat Mephisto. They will close the portals to a degree. Now, what's really interesting too is that there's talk that America Chavez is going to be in Doctor Strange too. And for those who don't know, one of America Chavez's powers is her ability to open up multiverses. So I think what will happen is by the end of this movie, It'll be that Wanda's ability to open multiverses has been stopped, but America Chavez is now on the table. She's like in our universe and she has an ability to do it. So she'll be that sort of like ace up of uh, ace up Kevin Feige's sleeve so that if he ever wants to open a portal to uh, like a Tom Hardy Venom or whatever, he'll have America Chavez to do it. And, and he'll solve this issue of, of Wanda, like uncontrollably opening up everything. So that'll, that'll be what I think. And, and here's, here's my bold prediction of what I think actually could happen is by the end of Dr. Strange 2, I think it might be possible that Tom Holland gets sucked into the Sony verse. And, and that's going to be Feige saying, uh, you know, their way of saying, Hey, it's great while it lasted, but you're in Sony verse now have fun going, making movies with, 
Tom Hardy and Venom. And, and that'll be my bold prediction. So anyways, that is my uh, kind of explanation sort of run of what I think is going to happen with um, WandaVision into Spider-Man into uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, how we're going to get Mephisto, why I think we're getting Mephisto because we need him on the table to help serve the stories of Doctor Doom and Silver Surfer and Ghost Rider later on. I do think that Ghost Rider will emerge from Doctor Strange 2 and, and then he'll have his own sort of show or whatever whatever he does. Maybe maybe he'll carry on in the Blade uh, movie after that and Blade will have to fight Ghost Rider or something. Uh, so anyways, that is all I got for this video. I know it's a little bit of a long one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, and here's the thing. I took a look at uh, Silver Surfer number three as far as a spec book. And it was funny because I mentioned it in my undervalued spec books a few weeks back. And now I saw on GoCluck, it's jumped up 50 spots. So it is now in near the top 10, I believe. But I recently just checked eBay and there's only been 10 copies sold in the last you know handful of days. So I think there's still opportunities for Mephisto books. I saw a pretty good mid-grade that went for a hundred bucks. Someone got a steal on that one, which is pretty crazy. So if you uh, have the money and you've always wanted that Mephisto book, I think now is the time to get it before uh, we get any more news or Easter eggs or anything like that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Am I going crazy over here? Is my tinfoil hat too snug? Let me know what you think. Are we getting Mephisto? Are we getting Sinister Six? That's, that's all I got for this video. Drop me a like, drop me a comment. Let's keep this conversation going and I will see you in the next video.